Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, we're going to be talking about the DC motor. So in today's session, we're going to be talking about the DC motor. Before we start, make sure that you've watched my other videos on current and magnetism and the motor effect and the left hand rule before watching this video because it will make sense. You've got to watch those episodes first before doing this one. Right, so let's have a quick recap before we move on. So right now we have a North Pole resting on a table and we have a South Pole resting on a table. First of all, the field lines are going out of the north and into the south. Field lines always go out of the north and into the south. Right, and let's say we were to place a wire within the field. So we're going to drop a wire in between the field. It's perpendicular to the field, everyone here, yes? Perpendicular to the field. So right now it's perpendicular to the field. What we will notice is that when current passes through the wire, so the current's going to go in this direction over here, yeah, all the way around. So the bit that's in the field will experience a force, right? So the bit that is within the field will experience a force. So that force will be moving upwards over here. So it will experience a force. Okay, so we did that in the previous lesson. So make sure you're happy with this. Current passing through a wire perpendicular to a magnetic field will experience a force. You can work out the direction with Fleming's left hand rule. So what exactly is the DC motor? It's almost the same as this. We're going to add a couple of things to the diagram and we will look at it together. Right, so we have the same setup, North Pole over here, South Pole over there. But now we're going to run a square wire in between it. So we're going to run a square wire. So we're going to take a wire and straighten it out into this kind of quadrant kind of shape here. So it's going to look like this. So we're going to draw it there, 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 and to the center. Yeah, it's hollow, everyone. So the red line, it represents the wire. The red line represents the wire right now. This part two parts over here. This part is connected to a thing here, which is like a ring, which has been split into two. So it's a split ring. This is a split ring commutator. So here we go. So that's connected to this bit over here. So let's label a couple of things here. This is going to be the coil of wire. So I put square coil of wire. So we have it square coil of wire. Okay. And then it's connected to a little terminal over here. It's connected to a little terminal over here. This is called the split ring. So this is called the split ring commutator. Don't worry about the fancy words for now. Right, so that is a split ring commutator. So that is a ring. Imagine it's a ring. We've cut it into two. So it's a split ring right now. And we're going to attach uh, each of them. They're going to be connected to two things called carbon brushes. So here we have. Here's a carbon brush. Here's the carbon brush here. So they are not joined to the ring yet. It's a carbon brush. It's free to move. And we're going to connect it to, obviously, uh, now a power supply over here. There we go. Yeah, and we're just labeling this bit over there. This bit is the carbon brush. So, okay, so this bit is the carbon brush. Right, it looks really complicated the first time we look at this diagram here because you're like, what on earth is going on here? All right, so now let's look at what happens when there's a current flowing through this wire. Well, when the current flows through this wire, it goes in this direction, yes? Out of the positive to the negative, so it's going this way around. So it's going to go there, 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 through the carbon brush, through the split ring commutator on this side, then going there, 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 back again. Wonderful. Right, let's label different points on this, yeah? So make sure you can follow the current flowing through that square all the way around over here. Let's label four parts of this wire. So I'm going to label this corner here, A, this bit B, this bit C, and this bit D. So the four corners, one, two, three, four. Okay? So here we have our DC motor now. I'm just going to just move it up right now so we have a bit more space. Everyone happy with this diagram? Right. So now, guys, what we're going to do is I'm going to draw the bird's eye view of this diagram. So on this side over here, to help me explain it, we're going to have the bird's eye view diagram of the left-hand side. So what does it look like? So if I was to draw this in bird's eye, we will look like this. We'll have over here and north. Over there, we will have the south. Yes, bird's eye view. And we'll have the square going all the way across. There we go. I'm not really going to draw the rest of it for now, but we'll just leave it as it is. Right, so we know that. Let's label the different parts. That's so going to be A, B, C, and D. The field lines are still going to go out of the north and into the south over here. Okay, right, so today's question is the following. So this is what the DC motor looks like. So this is the DC motor. So this, this is the DC motor. And if you've forgotten, 
What does the word DC stand for? DC stands for direct current. Yes, yeah? so DC stands for direct current motor. So obviously, because look, guys, the current is always DC. It's always flowing in the same direction here. So it's a DC current motor, direct current motor. All right, so everyone happy with this? So right now, the current's going to enter this terminal over here, go up, go across, go there, and go back down again. So the current's going to enter the set square like that. Right, so now I want you to look at different parts of the wire, different parts of that wire right now. So let's say we're looking at AB, first of all. Let's look at AB right now. Right, and today's question will be the following. In which direction will that part of the wire, AB, move? Which direction will it move in? Well, we can clearly see that. We can take our left hand rule out. So field's going across, current's going upwards. So it's going to move. Yeah, make sure you're doing it yourself, guys. So it's the field's going to the right, going upwards. Therefore, it's moving into the board, into the board. So this part of the wire, AB, will move into the board. So AB will move into the board. So AB will move into the board. Right, next one is going to be, what about BC? Which direction will BC move in? So, right, so for BC, we can see that the current and the field are parallel to each other. So if they are parallel, guys, what happens is no force is experienced. So what happens is for BC, because they are parallel, there is no force. So BC is not going to move. What about the next part of the wire, CD? What about CD part of the wire? over here so c to d what's going to happen is so right so take your left hand out field going across current going down it's going to move out this so this part of the wire will move out so cd will move out of the board so look at this diagram over here so i'm holding this piece of paper right now so think about it we know that ab is going to move into the board so it's going to move away from you and cd is moving out so what's going to happen to the whole thing well think about it one side of it's going to move in the other part's moving out the whole thing will rotate. So what happens is the whole thing will rotate round. So yes, this wire over here will start to rotate round. So there we go. Right, adding it to our diagram, guys, we can see that the rotation is going to be in this direction over here. So the whole thing will rotate round. And obviously, this now explains the direct current motor, the DC motor. So as you can see, this is the DC motor. So make sure you understand how this works. Yeah, there's multiple things going on here. So you're probably thinking, oh my God, what kind of question will they ask in the exam? Well, we can look at it. Number one, they could ask you about the construction of it. You've got to be able to describe it. You've got a North Pole and a South Pole with a permanent magnetic field going across. You have a square wire in between it. And what will happen is one part of the wire will experience force in one direction. The other part of the wire, opposite side of the wire, will experience force in the opposite direction. Therefore, it will cause a rotation around. So therefore, it will cause a rotation around. Right, so you're probably asked, thinking, whereabouts can I find this? This is used in every single fan. Every time you see something spinning around, it's due to this motion because you put current into it and there's a magnetic field. Therefore, it causes a rotation. So this is found in every single fan out there, including your washing machines, guys. Right, so a couple of things now before we move on. Number one. Why do we have the carbon brush? So what is the reason why we have a carbon brush? So we're just going to zoom out for a bit. Right, so the reason why it's a brush and therefore it's not soldered together is so that when the coil rotates, it doesn't get tangled up. Because if those weren't brushes and you've soldered it together, yeah, you've fixed them together, the whole thing will become tangled up. So the carbon brushes, they stop the coil from becoming tangled up. So the carbon brushes stop the coil from becoming tangled up, everyone. Okay. Right, the next one's going to be, what is the function of the split ring? Why do I have the split ring? Right, so as it rotates around, what happens is the split ring swaps from touching that carbon brush and touches the other one. Therefore, the current always enters in the same direction. So the split ring enables the current to always flow in the same direction. Why? Because the terminals swap around. Right, so the function of the split ring is to ensure that the current enters from the same direction because as it turns around, that terminal swaps over here. All right, so now let's look at a practice exam question. It could be the following. Right, so the question could be the following. Explain why the coil rotates. Due to the motor effect, parts of the wire with the current running perpendicular will experience a force. So that's going to be in this diagram over here. AB will experience a force and CD. Why? Because they are both perpendicular. And the reason why it rotates is because they will be in opposite directions. And the force experience will be in opposite directions, therefore causing a rotation. 
So that's the kind of question you might get. So you have to obviously talk about the left hand rule over here, talk about different parts of the Y experiencing forces, and obviously the forces are in opposite direction, therefore causing a rotation. Okay, so quick recap from the top. We said we started off with the DC motor, yes? Today's title is the DC motor, the direct current motor. So we have the following diagram now. We have a North Pole and a South Pole. We run a wire within it that's connected to a split ring commutator. Then there's carbon brushes attached to that. And the carbon brushes let this ring spin freely. So they let the ring spin freely. We pass current within it. We will notice that, as you can see on the right hand side, the points AB will experience a force, BC won't, and CD will. So AB will experience a force, and so will CD, but they will be in opposite directions. Therefore, it, the whole thing will rotate round. Okay? And the function of the carbon brushes are, is to stop the coil from becoming tangled up. Because as it rotates, it will become tangled. The carbon brushes let it flow freely. And the function of the split ring is to ensure that the current enters the same direction. Because as it rotates round, the terminals swap around. Right, and that's it for another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure that you like and subscribe to my videos. Comment below if you have any questions. This is a tough unit, guys. So spend your time looking at it. And obviously try some past paper questions to keep yourself going. Ciao, ciao, everyone. Goodbye.